In this video, I'll be answering questions submitted by PaintShop Pro users on a variety of topics. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this QA session and submit your own questions to be answered in future videos. Our first question is, is there a way to get all of the creative content from past versions? I have a picture tube from an earlier version, and I'd love to add past content like this to my current version. Creative content packs are unique to the version of PaintShop Pro you're using. To see what's available, click the house icon to open the welcome book and choose store, which is get more in earlier versions. Then check the creative content filter. These packs are part of the user license agreement and therefore can't be distributed on their own, but if you owned previous versions of PaintShop Pro, you can migrate old content to the current version. There are three places to look for previously downloaded creative content. One is Documents, Corel PaintShop Pro, Version, and within this folder are subfolders for brushes, masks, picture tubes, etc. You can also check in C, Program Files, or Program Files x86, Corel, Corel PaintShop Pro version number, Languages, your language. Here you can find palettes, presets, scripts, etc. The third spot is C, Program Data, which is a folder you may have to unhide, Corel, Corel PaintShop Pro version number. In this folder, each different type of content is in a different numbered subfolder. For example, Corel 01 contains brushes, Corel 06 is for gradients, Corel 07 has masks, etc. For any content you want to migrate, here's how to tell PaintShop Pro where to find it. Go to File, Preferences, File Locations. If it's previous picture tubes you want, then choose that file type, and the folders listed are for the current version. Click Add, browse to where your old content is, and add that folder to the list. How do I darken brush outlines so that I can view the area I'm working on? If there is not enough contrast, it's difficult to see the brush. For every tool in PaintShop Pro that has a tool outline, the outline color should be easy to see against any colors. This is easiest to see with a grayscale image. Over a light area, the paintbrush outline is dark. Over a dark area, the outline is light. And when both light and dark are present, the color changes along the tool outline. The same is true for tools in which you drag the mouse, like the freehand selection tool. The outline I'm drawing changes color. It's one of those things you don't even notice unless it's not working as it should. Check that brush outlines are turned on, which is done in File, Preferences, General Program Preferences, Display and Caching. I just bought PaintShop Pro 2021 after using version 9 forever. How can I get a color palette like the standard one from version 9? Go to File, Preferences, General Program Preferences, and open the Palette tab along the left. Here you'll find several color display options, including Use Classic Material Properties. After clicking OK, you should have the familiar frame and rainbow palettes. I want to convert text to a curve, but the Convert Text to Curve options are grayed out in the Options menu. Fit Text to Path is also grayed out. These options are relevant for text in vector format, so the first thing to check is that text is being created correctly. I'll activate text. Make sure Create As is set to Vector, click and type, and apply. The text is selected, placed on its own vector layer, and the text options are available in the Objects menu. The same text options can also be found in the Context menu, which appears when I right-click. If I want to convert text after it's already created, I need to first select it with the Pick tool. When I select the text directly on the image, the text options are available but if I use the Pick tool to select the entire vector layer, those options are grayed out. This is because a vector layer is actually a group of layers. I need to select the text sublayer, which has a T icon for text, in order to have the text options available. Once text is no longer a vector object, I won't have text options available. I'll convert this text to a curve, choosing Single Shape. Now the text sublayer has a curve icon, and text options are grayed out. I do have curve editing options available now, such as activating the pen tool and using edit mode to move nodes. 
Fading text to path is similar. I need to start with two vector objects, text and a curve. Here's my vector text, and I'll use the pen tool while connecting segments and create it as a vector with no fill. With the pick tool, I can either select both objects directly on the image while holding shift, or I can select both sublayers while holding shift, and the fit text to path option is available. If I want to move the text along the curve, I need to make sure that only the text is selected with the pick tool. The new workspace is great for touch screens, but why can't I find commonly used tools such as Crop? If your edit tab looks like this, you're using the touch screen friendly photography workspace, and the Crop tool is in the lower right corner. If it looks like this, you're in the Essentials workspace. The Crop tool is part of the Tools toolbar, which can be opened by choosing View, Toolbars, Tools. If you're looking for the full set of tools and palettes, you want the complete workspace. To change your workspace, click the house icon to open the welcome book, click Get Started, and choose your workspace here. When using the gradient fill tool, I can't seem to change the color of the outer edges of the gradient. I select a color from the palette, but when I return to the area I want to change, instead of the cursor displaying a plus sign, my cursor is a pointing hand. I click on the gradient square and nothing happens. Am I missing a step somewhere? The missing step here is probably that you're clicking a color swatch instead of dragging it onto the gradient. I'll demonstrate with another mountain landscape photo. I'll add another raster layer above the background, which will contain the new sky gradient. To select the area where I want to apply the gradient, I'll make the background layer active and use the Smart Selection brush to select all of the sky and clouds. The new layer is the one I want to fill with a gradient, so I'll make that layer active, then activate the Gradient Fill tool. The foreground swatch shows my most recently used gradient, a dusky sky, which I'll apply by dragging a straight line from the top of the sky to the lowest point along the ground. This gradient has five color change points, which I can drag to new spots along the gradient line. I can remove a color by dragging its swatch off the gradient line, and add a new color by dragging it from the palette onto the gradient line. While I'm doing this, the cursor has a plus sign. To change any of these gradient colors, I need to first select it, and my cursor is now a pointing hand. With this color square selected, I'll drag a new color into the square. Just clicking a new color swatch won't change a gradient color, each color must be dragged in. Now I can lower the opacity of this sky layer so that it's a bit more subtle. This brings us to the end of our PrintShop Pro Q&A session. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, please follow the link in the description below, which will take you to this tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you'll also find a written version of this tutorial, and you can submit your own questions to be answered in future videos.